have certificates to give out. And I'm old school. All right. I still believe in the right hand of fellowship, Amen. where we all get an opportunity to shake hands with, they're no longer candidates, yeah. but our baptized believers. Amen. I just want to say to each of you who were baptized, I want you to be mindful that number one, we practice the ordinance of water baptism because it was commanded by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, as a Bible preacher, we will not cease to do what his word instructs us to do, to be baptized by his authority in his name, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I want you to understand the significance of being baptized in the name of the Father is significant of you now being his. You're no longer your own. You belong to God. He bought you with a great price. He paid for you, spirit, soul, and body, with the sacrifice of his son, Jesus. So if you want to know how much he costs, if you want to know how much your soul costs, it was the sacrifice of Jesus Christ dying at Calvary. That's how valuable you are to God. If you had been the only person alive, he still would have sent Jesus to die on the cross that you might be saved. Amen. Your being baptized is but an outward testimony of your faith in Christ Jesus. And Romans chapter 6 tells us, and this is, this is something I really want you to understand. Uh, according to Romans chapter 6 verse 3, it says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Mm -hmm. Verse 4 said, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. And like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. And I want that to stand out for you. That now that you have been baptized, even if you've been rebaptized, into Christ Jesus. We use water because, thank God, that's the substance that our bodies can go down into and then come right up out of. So when you went down, you were buried with him. God saw you buried with Jesus when he was buried. But just as Jesus rose from the dead, God saw you rising from the dead. The old man is gone. Yes. Look at one another and say, the old man is gone. The old man is gone. Come on, look at one another. Look at your neighbor and tell the old man is gone. Some of you in the congregation need to tell somebody, say, the old man is gone. The old man is gone. And you, you are resurrected a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And the emphasis of, of verse 4 is, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Amen. But as we emphasize this morning in service, that's something that you're going to grow in. I'm not going to tell you that just because now that you've been baptized, everything is going to be totally different tomorrow. Absolutely not. Those of you who are in school, if somebody's been bothering you at school, they're probably still going to be bothering you. But have a mindset, I'm going to deal with them differently. I'm going to deal with them from the mindset that I am now a new creation in Christ Jesus. So I will deal with them by praying for them. I'll deal with them by, I may have to take it. You know, on the job, you might be working with somebody who just gives you a problem. And you say, you know what? That's all right, I'll take it. And when you get off to yourself, pray for them. Pray for them. Don't curse them, but bless them. Pray for them. When folk get on your nerves, pray for them. Encourage them because you are new. You are new. So walk in that newness. Verse 5 goes on to say, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. In that you have been buried into the water and you've come out, even your baptism today 
serves as a seed or a foretaste of what's going to happen in the future. When we die, because we all, how I many of you know we all die? We all, we all have to die. We all have to die. But guess what? We, since we've died in Christ, spiritually we die no more. We're alive in Christ Jesus. And just as Jesus is raised from the dead, you will also rise again. The Bible says that there will be a last trump. When that last trump sounds, the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise and we will meet the Lord in the air and we will forever be with him. So your baptism is a physical symbol of being planted into the likeness of his death and planted in the likeness of his resurrection. If he got up, you getting up. Amen. Just as you went down and you came up out of that water, no matter what happens to your body, your spirit man lives on in Christ Jesus. You are ever with the Lord, and so you will rise again. And that's a guarantee according to his word. Verse 6 goes on to say, knowing this, that our old man is crucified. Just put your hand up. Just put your hand on the center of your chest and say, Oh man, oh man, you're dead. You're dead. And our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Say, I'm free from sin. I'm free from Come on, say it like you mean I'm free from sin. I'm free from sin. Say again, I'm free from sin. I'm free from sin. Verse 8 goes on to say, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Now listen to verse 7. I mean verse 11. Listen to this. Likewise, reckon, reckon, I'll use the word account or, or just think like this. You also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So just say that after me. I'm dead to sin. I'm dead to sin. And alive to God. And alive to God. Now, how many of you know, even though you're dead to sin because you're in this body, sin is going to cry out. Yes. It's going to cry out after you. It's going to cry out after you. It's going to call your name. It's going to call your name. Still call your name. But you know, you just say, I'm dead. I'm dead to you. I'm dead to you. I'm dead to you. And you know, you don't even have to say, leave me alone. You don't even have to say, leave me alone because they ain't going to leave you alone. I'm going to be honest with you. It's not going to leave you alone. You're going to have to take a stand and say, no, I'm dead to you. I'm dead to you. I'm dead to you. I'm alive unto God. And just say that to yourself. Just say that over and over. I'm alive unto God. Holy Ghost, rise up within me. Give me the power to resist. Amen, somebody. There's a whole song that says, yield not to temptation. For yielding is sin. You'll be tempted. That's okay. We all get tempted. If we be honest, we all get tempted. But I believe that God gives us the power to stand in the face of temptation and say, no, thank you. Amen. And if you do slip, the Bible says, according to 1 John 1, 9, confess your sin. Admit it. Acknowledge I have sinned. And the Lord says, forgive him. Because he's faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins. You no longer have to stand before the great white throne judgment of God. You will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And I pray that what you will do from this time forward is that as you grow, you will find your place in ministry. And when I say find your place in ministry, I'm not just talking about the four walls of the church. The ministry doesn't only happen in the four walls. God may call you outside of the four walls of the church. Do something. Minister to somebody. Encourage somebody. You know, I often tell people, I don't know if any of you are playwrights, but if you were a playwright, that doesn't mean you always have to write gospel plays. Just write a play that, that testifies the truth. If you're a singer, sing the truth. If you're a dancer, dance and witness to the truth. If you're a bank teller, 
Be the best bank teller you can possibly be. So that when folk come to that bank, they want to come to your window. They said, I want to go there. I want to go to her window because she knows how to wait on people. She knows how to serve. Because the greatest in the kingdom of God is a servant. So all of this is a part of yours and your experience now. Verse 12, and I'll conclude with this, says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. So I just want to congratulate each of you and say God bless you. Praise the Lord. I am honored to have been one, along with Brother Stephen, Deacon Stephen, Tucson, to have administered your baptism in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So as you stand, I want you to stand up and say, I'm new. Those of you who were baptized, just stand up and say, I'm new. I'm new. Now if you'll just come and step forward, come step forward. Stay on.